If I could sum up 2023's farming sim adventures, I would say that this was the year we went off the beaten path of the traditional farming sim formula and challenged our preconceptions about what a farming sim entails. We saved the world, attracted tourists, traveled through time, and challenged monsters to save our tomatoes, among other activities which you might not traditionally think of with farming. It really was an exciting year to be growing things. I do want to make a quick note before we jump in that this list includes titles that we either finished or spent a considerable amount of time playing. In an effort to keep things positive, I also won't be including any titles that I dropped. And finally, you can rest assured that I won't be spoiling any major gameplay elements for the games listed here, in case you'd like to play them yourself. We started off the year with Story of Seasons, Pioneers of All of Town, a game that we played the majority of in 2022, but that we got to finish in 2023. Out of all the games we played this year, it was by far the most traditional farming sim. While it does have a plot, it's quite a minor one, revolving around helping the town build itself up to attract more visitors. There are some additional post-game plot points revolving around the more supernatural members of the community, but the grind wasn't something that I was interested in pursuing. Though, these late-game quests do seem to give players who want more to do something to strive for. Although not my favorite farming sim of the lot, with a large cast, an interesting system of taming animals instead of simply purchasing them, and the opportunity to decorate your farm, Pioneers of Olive Town has a lot to offer those who like designing their farms and having a slightly more urban feel to their adjacent town. We then jumped from the most traditional of farming sims to Terra Neal, which really is an ecosystem revitalization puzzle game, but I included it on this list as we were growing plants, just on a much larger scale. With a few different difficulty levels, there's something for everyone in Terra Neal, and I can say with full confidence that when your workflow starts to click, this game is incredibly satisfying. You usually start on a very polluted piece of land, and it's up to you to use technology to decontaminate the soil, encourage different generations and types of plant growth, and restore some species to their native habitats. Once you're done, you pack up and head to a new biome to explore. I played this game right at launch and had a lot of fun with it. Although it wasn't a particularly long game, I am interested to see if the devs might consider adding more biomes in the future for us to enjoy. After our jaunt restoring nature, we returned to Doraemon Story of Seasons, which is another game we played the lion's share of in 2022, but which reached its conclusion in 2023. This is a collaboration between the famous children's anime Doraemon and the Story of Seasons franchise. Despite the long, unskippable cutscenes to set up the story at the start of the game and the grindy friendship progression system, I really believe that this game is incredibly special. The plot was both lovingly crafted and engaging to play through, the art was beautiful, the cast was a sweet mix of different personalities and archetypes which did well to embody the small town feel, and honestly, the finale got me a little emotional. My one regret is that I definitely rushed through the plot towards the end, as I was eager to find out what happened, and wished I had spent a little more time grinding out several of the relationships. That said, this game still remains as one of my favorite farming sims, and I can't recommend it enough to those who like their farming to come with a carefully constructed narrative. Feeling a little emotional after such a big finish, we changed course a bit to check out the newly released 24 Solar Terms, a puzzle game that transported us to rural China to explore some traditional farming proverbs. The scenery in this one was really lovely, and I enjoyed getting to unlock all the mysteries of each season. With so many farming sims utilizing western farming methods, it was nice to see a game that focused more on farming in other parts of the world. A good short game to pick up if you like the agrarian lifestyle but aren't necessarily looking for the farming grind. It's certainly made for a sweet playthrough, especially in cold weather when the outdoors don't look nearly as lush and inviting. Revitalized, after such a light-hearted game, we dove right in with Harvestella, which definitely qualifies as more of an action RPG, but it has farming sim elements as a leisure activity, which qualifies it for this list. Harvestella is a gorgeous fantasy adventure that brings you through a whole lot of emotional twists and turns. 
the narrative focuses on unraveling your own past as much as saving a beautiful world which is imperiled by dangerous weather conditions. It's a great pickup for anyone who wants to branch out from their farming sim roots, or for those who just really enjoy a good story. Beware that the combat is very central to this game, but don't let that put you off. If you checked out the trailer for Harvestella and were at all intrigued, I can say that I appreciated some Square Enix artistry and storytelling being brought into the farming sim world. If you'd like a more thorough review of this game, I'll include a link to my spoiler-free review in the description box below. On a roll with the more emotional narratives, we decided to play through The Stillness of the Wind a short, narrative farming sim which mainly centers around the realities of aging, especially alone, in a rural environment. It grapples with difficult subjects, and there is an ever-present anxiety which creates tension in an otherwise fairly idyllic environment. I wasn't sure what to expect when this game caught my eye, but I'm so genuinely glad that I decided to take a chance on it. The gameplay loop was engaging and challenging. Instead of the plucky 20-something coming to a new farm, I loved getting to slot into an existing farm and see a perhaps more somber, but also more realistic view of agrarian life. And it quickly became one of my top playthroughs of the year. If you'd like a shorter farming sim that has a bit more narrative woven into it and a lot more thought-provoking elements, I'd highly recommend checking out The Stillness of the Wind and all it has to offer. As the autumn chill began to creep into the cottage, we ventured over to the darker side of farming with Pumpkin Panic which takes us into the horror genre, an unusual choice to pair with farming but one which really worked well in this game. To start, you get bamboozled into taking over a farm in the middle of a very sinister wood. The only escape? To fix your boat, which needs several new parts to return to working order. And the only way to make money? By growing crops and selling them, of course. You buy upgrades to improve efficiency, expand your farm, and meet an increasingly dangerous cast of terrifying monsters. This game is a lot of fun, but is definitely not for the faint of heart with both creepy monsters and a few jump scares. It does make for an excellent October game, and is a good mashup of horror and farming, which is unusual in the space. A good one to check out for those who want a little bit more excitement added to their farming routine. Following up that adventure, we decided to get even more horrified by playing The Stoavi Curse, a game that is really much more horror than farming sim. Sure, the main gameplay loop is growing tomatoes to reach your quota and escape to the safety of your house each night, but most of your time is spent running away from the monsters stalking your property. The crunchy graphics only add to this game, and honestly, I really loved the increasingly skin-crawling feeling you got as you had to return to the farm each day. That said, I'm going to be far more protective over my tomatoes in future farming ventures, knowing how crushing it is to lose them at the last moment after keeping them alive for so long. This game is best played by those who don't mind having to run and hide from enemies while also completing other tasks. After being thoroughly terrified, we opted to loop back to something a little bit more lighthearted with Fay Farm, a debut farming sim with a bit of a fairy twist. The story took you through various dungeons to try and riddle out some adverse weather conditions that were wreaking havoc on the area. Interestingly, unlike most farming sims, you actually get to tend multiple different farms at the same time in Fay Farm. Some of my favorite aspects included the absolutely adorable livestock models, getting to breed new color variants of our animals, and trying to morph crops and trees into their seasonal variants. Although not my absolute favorite farming sim, I really enjoyed several of the farming mechanics, like the use of potions to speed up watering. This game is a great one for folks who would like the option to farm with a couple of friends and to enjoy decorating and making their farms aesthetic. While the story in Fay Farm was definitely rather sweet, we were looking for something a little bit more mature, which led us to finishing out Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life, the remake of the GameCube classic which, at least for me, was the beginning of my farming sim obsession. Streamlined much like the special edition, Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life is still definitely a long game, but one that is rewarding to work through until the end. 
Although certainly not a modern farming sim, there were some quality of life changes like relationship meters that made much of the experience a little bit more engaging to a modern audience. Getting to watch yourself and the townsfolk aging, slowly improving your farm and your relationships, and getting to raise a family is what makes this game so special. If you missed your chance to play the original, I'd highly suggest taking A Wonderful Life for a spin and finding out why it really shook up the classic farming sim formula. Once again, bitten by the narrative bug after the emotional finale of A Wonderful Life, we jumped right back into Doraemon Story of Seasons Friends of the Great Kingdom, which is the second game in the collaboration between Doraemon and the Story of Seasons series. Though you certainly don't need to play the original to experience the magic of Friends of the Great Kingdom, there are some delightful references that enjoyers of the first game will certainly appreciate. This game sees Nobi and his crew of friends once again stranded in a new place and needing to farm and forge friendships with the locals in their quest to return home. With a delightful cast, the same beautiful art style, and a much more forgiving friendship progression system, this game has been a complete joy to play through thus far. I'm excited to see where the story will take us, but I've also just been enjoying getting to relax and appreciate all the lovely vistas this game has to offer. Along with the story-rich experience of Doraemon, finishing A Wonderful Life reminded me that maybe it was time to return to my roots a bit, so I managed to pick up The Ranch of Rivershine, a refreshing horse ranching sim all about training and breeding horses to compete in the local cross-country events. Created by the same dev as Lemon Cake, The Ranch of Rivershine, despite being an early access, is already well on its way to being an excellent addition to the genre. With massive trails to explore, tons of beautiful horses to care for, and plenty of progression, the game is certainly one you settle into for the long haul. Definitely one to check out if horses have ever been an interest of yours. I've been completely obsessed with this game ever since I picked it up, and it has quickly become one of my favorite games of 2023. And that is the winding road that we took through farming in 2023. It was a lot of fun to get to experience so many amazing games and be able to work our way through a number of different styles of farming, gameplay, and storytelling. Whereas we kept things fairly classic in 2022, I enjoyed all the chances we took in 2023 and would like to keep exploring games that preserve the traditional farming sim formula along with those that really push the envelope of what it means to have farming as a core gameplay element. I hope you all enjoyed all the farming adventures we got up to in 2023, and I can't wait to see what new ones will go on in 2024.